Oh, hey everyone. I've been seeing a lot of comments from you guys talking about how bad dams are for fish populations. So I thought, why not make a video to really dig deep into this topic? Today, we're going to explore how hydropower dams impact fish and the surrounding ecosystems. It's a complicated subject, but one that's super important to understand. Now, when we think about renewable energy, hydropower usually pops into our heads first, right? It's one of the cleanest and most efficient ways to generate electricity. I mean, it's powered by water. But behind that clean energy label lies a more complicated story, especially for the fish that live in and around these rivers. Can fish survive in a hydropower dam? And what are the broader impacts on the ecosystem? Here's the thing. Dams, by their very design, block the natural flow of rivers. And while that might not seem like a huge deal at first, for fish that rely on these waterways to migrate, spawn, and just survive, it's a big problem. Take salmon, for example. These fish migrate upstream to lay their eggs. But when you throw a giant dam in their way, it acts like a huge wall, cutting them off from their breeding grounds. Some dams do have what's called a fish ladder, a series of steps that fish can swim up to bypass the dam. Sounds like a great fix, right? But not all fish are able to make it up these ladders. And to make things worse, not all dams even have these ladders in the first place. Even with a fish ladder in place, it's not a perfect solution. A lot of fish can't navigate them, and even if some do, it's still a struggle. So as you can guess, this isn't exactly an ideal escape route for them. But that's just the adult fish. Let's talk about the babies, also known as fry. After adult fish lay their eggs upstream, their offspring eventually have to make their way back downriver. And guess what's waiting for them down there? Yep, those massive turbines. Now, these turbines are designed to generate electricity, which is great for us, but not so much for the fish. Picture it this way. Imagine you're on a water slide, but at the end of the slide is a giant spinning blade. Brutal, right? That's basically what these fry are dealing with. And while some manage to escape, a lot of them get injured or don't survive at all. Now, you might be thinking, isn't there some kind of technology to keep fish from getting sucked into the turbines? Well, yes. Some dams have installed screens or meshes over the turbine intakes. These are meant to keep larger fish out, but the smaller fish, like the fry, can still slip through. So while the effort is there, it's not really solving the problem. And here's where things get even trickier. Dams don't just block fish from migrating or throw them into dangerous turbines. They also create problems when releasing water downstream. When a dam releases water, it usually happens all at once, kind of like opening the floodgates. This sudden surge of water can be pretty rough on fish. Some get caught up in the current, and while a few make it over the dam through the spillways, many don't survive the drop. Even if they do, they often get injured when they hit the structures below, like the stilling basins. These basins are meant to slow the water down, but for the fish, they're more like deadly obstacles. But it's not just the fish we need to worry about. The entire river ecosystem is affected by dams. Rivers are dynamic ecosystems, meaning that everything, water flow, temperature, sediment, affects the plants, animals, and fish living there. Dams disrupt these natural processes. Water that used to flow freely now sits in reservoirs, and this standing water can get warmer than the natural river, which is harmful to fish species that need cooler water to survive. On top of that, Sediment that would usually flow downstream and provide nutrients to the river ecosystem gets trapped behind the dam. Without that sediment, downstream habitats can basically starve, which affects everything living there. Fish migration is another huge problem. As I mentioned earlier, dams block fish from reaching their spawning grounds, and this is especially a big deal for species like salmon. In the Pacific Northwest, for example, salmon populations have taken a serious hit because of dams. Even with fish ladders and bypass systems in place, salmon numbers have been on the decline for years. Some species of fish have even gone extinct because of the long-term impacts of these dams. Speaking of extinction, here's a shocking stat for you. More than 120 freshwater species in North America have gone extinct since 1900. That's wild, right? And a lot of that can be traced back to the impact of dams on rivers and aquatic ecosystems. Freshwater species are disappearing at a rate five times faster than species on land, 
which makes freshwater ecosystems some of the most stressed on the planet. We might not notice it as much because fish aren't as visible to us as, say, polar bears or elephants. But the damage is real, and it's happening. Now don't get me wrong, hydropower isn't all bad. Dams generate a lot of clean energy without producing greenhouse gases, which is a huge plus in the fight against climate change. But like anything, there are trade-offs. And in the case of hydropower, the trade-offs are pretty steep when you consider the damage being done to fish populations and river ecosystems. So, what's the solution? Some experts believe that removing dams, especially the older ones that are no longer efficient, is the best option. In fact, some dams in the U.S. have already been removed, allowing rivers to flow freely again and giving fish a fighting chance. Check out my other video where I dive into the progress of dam removal in the U.S. Other solutions include creating better fish passage systems or even redesigning dams to be more eco-friendly. But at the end of the day, it's all about finding a balance between generating clean energy and protecting the ecosystems that depend on these rivers. So there you have it. That's the scoop on how hydropower dams affect fish populations and river ecosystems. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.